differently in the second half to Auburn than they did in the first half? Uh, no, they, we did not. They just ran it down our throat. They ran it down our throat. And then we had opportunities on third down to execute. And we talked about it last week. We've talked about it. All year. We have to execute the play call. And um, we got to go back to the drawing board, you know, and see, okay, what can we execute? Because obviously we're not executing at a high enough level right now. How much, how much to are guys being beat up at this point in the season? How much does that have to do with it? Yeah. I mean, there's no excuse. Everybody's got to go through that. Everybody's got beat up guys. Everybody's got, you know, backup set up to step up when they go in the game. And the backups, when they come in the game, they have to know what to do. They rep it in practice. They've got to execute as well. You know, I've got to go back and look. No, that's all right. Yeah, I go back and look. And, you know, if it's too much for them to execute, I need to I need to reevaluate. What was maybe the most surprising thing from your defense tonight? I was just surprised how we got pushed around up front. I mean, that that's the bottom line. And credit Auburn. They came out with a physical mentality. I thought our guys had a good week of practice. I thought they started out the game with that, you know, and then, uh, you know, a couple of runs got out. And this is where we have to have resilience. And we got to be able to shake things off. And we got to be able to keep playing, um, you know. And so it, it, we will. There's a standard that we have to, to play to, a standard that's been set by guys that have come before, and that standard was not even close to set. And we, we talked about it in the bye week. We talked about, you know, coming out of that old Miss game and, you know, how they played, and they, they set a, a bar and a standard for what this defense should be and how they should be. And it doesn't matter who's in and who's not in or who's hurt or, you know, coaches included. <laughs> we have got to play to that level. There is no other option. Brad, when it's the big passes last week and it's the big runs this week, how hard is it to figure out something to kind of zero in on to say, like, we, can, we need to address this? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's what we got to figure out, you know. Um, again, you know, we're, if it's if it's we need to simplify, if if we need to do go in some other, you know, sort of direction, um, we, we all options are on the table. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Thanks, coach. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we had planned on, on giving Gavin the third drive of the game. Um, again, we just, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is we've always thought his, uh, his combination of size and speed and athleticism, uh, wanted to see if that was going to provide a spark for us. Um, again, we were just, we're at that point right now where, where we just, uh, you know, felt we needed to do something. Uh, I don't think it's anything to, to Brock's situation. Again, I think that guy's battled his butt off and, and, uh, Given us everything he has, but but we we wanted to see what it looked like and, and decided to make the move. Bush is Gavin showing more in practice because I mean we've heard all year that he's one of your best playmakers and we just haven't seen it in game. So what what is it that you guys are seeing that you want to see more out of that? Yeah, I think it's just I just think it's the situation of the combination of size, speed. Again, uh, with where our running back situation was today. Again, if if uh, you ask me, is he one of the more explosive guys we have? Uh, I think the answer is yes. So. Uh, as we all know in the SEC, you don't have time to kind of figure it out. And, and again, we just we, we took that plan to try to get him in on that third drive. Uh, we ended up waiting a little bit, but, but it is what it is. Bush, you guys have seen struggled to... different from him once he got some extended run. I think so. You know, it's just hard to you know. I think on that last drive, I mean, there was there was some explosiveness from him. Again, the consistency part uh, is, is something. Obviously, uh, we got to go and look at the tape. But but you know, right now, I think. Uh, you know, you're looking at explosives, you're looking at playmakers, and, and we felt we, he, he deserved to, to get a shot at. Bush, you talked about that situation at running back today. Two young guys had some, had some decent carries, but you guys never seemed to kind of 
push the push it there and try to establish the run. What ended went into that decision? Lack of confidence, experience. What what was it? No, I just think you know you got to make that decision if you feel like you can keep chipping away at them, and um, you know as the play caller, just didn't feel that way. You know, I just felt like it was behind the sticks and second long a decent amount of time. I thought uh, we knew they had a very talented front. Again, I think we said it before the week of their their record didn't indicate players they had on that front seven and uh, uh, we felt we were going to have to take more shots down the field and try to score quicker than, than try to be able to wear them out. Mark said that all options are on the table. How many more different options do you have as an offense left in the day? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I think uh, uh, we're playing Malachi Wood at the tackle position. Cortland Ford's out there playing. We've probably seen the four or five different running backs. Um, you know, so I think for the most part, um, you know, we're, we're where we're at and, and just got to got to get going and keep, uh, again, one day at a time getting better, and, and that's ultimately all we can do. Bush, you guys have struggled to get Barry on involved tonight. It was two total yards on offense tonight there. What 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 do you guys have to do to do that? Because you'll see big plays at times with him, like in Florida and other times, but it seems like there's games where you just can't seem to get him involved. Yeah, just inexcusable. So, again, I think it's – it's not necessarily taking throwing the ball down the field. I thought we gave him a couple couple uh, targets today down the field. We got to get him the ball quicker, and, and again, just just got to get him the ball. What do you feel like you're failing in on those low red zone situations? You get it yeah. inside the five, but can't punch it in. Yeah, the last drive I think was hard. You know, I felt we uh, we should have scored on that that first handoff right there, just on the two yard line, and so. Uh, it's been one thing or another when we get down there within the five or in. I mean, even in the first one, you know, I thought we, we had a pass completion uh, there on the left side. Um, so, again, we just we, we got to evaluate where we're at. And, uh, you know, right now punching it in from the three has not been as, as easy as it's been in the past, and we got to put a better plan together. What should make sense for how the young running backs are now like how we're playing? Uh, you know, we're going to take a look at it again. Um, it's a big physical front they went up against, you know, just just at all levels. I think uh, I think you saw that uh, with their their front seven, as talented in my opinion as probably anybody we've gone up against. So, been proud of Malachi. You know, I, I know certainly last week I thought he battled extremely hard, uh, being thrown into a tough situation. We'll evaluate the film today and, and go from there. Well, show much a hamstring as a play caller when you're down your two most experienced running backs. Yeah, I mean it's it's part of the job, you know. So every week you got to figure out. Uh, who that is, who to target, who to get the ball to. Um, again, I just just biggest thing today, just felt kept getting behind the sticks and second and long situations, third and long situations. It's probably not going to be a strength for any team, but but for us right now, that's that's certainly something we got to avoid. But you talk one. a lot about Gavin and his explosiveness on the ground. What's your level of confidence in what he can do in the passing game specifically? You know, I think um, – I think there's certain things he can be good at. You know, I like the couple of the balls he threw down the field again to give Barry on a chance. Uh, I think his accuracy down the field is certainly there. Uh, the game plan does change if, if he's out there and playing to his strengths, which is probably no different than any other quarterback. But um, again, you know, I think he knew what the situation was going to be that he was going to play today, and, and uh, you know, we'll just have to evaluate it. Gavin, you get the nod tonight a little bit through the game. Things didn't go as well as you wanted on the first couple drives. You guys get the ball moving and then doesn't end that way. Just how frustrating is that when it seems like you kind of finally get an opportunity to get a couple drives down seven? Um, it's very frustrating, um, especially, you know, you get to the two-yard line and uh, uh, don't get in, don't don't score the ball. Uh, so it's very tough, especially uh, in the situation we're in. Uh, but, uh, you know, just got to learn from it. Get better. Kevin, when did they tell you that you were going to play this much? Was that the plan all week, or was that kind of in, in the idea of the moment? Um, it, I mean, it was part of the plan, but um, I mean, halftime we went in and uh, just said we were going to go with me, and um, you know, I was ready to roll. Uh, you know, Brock, great guy, selfless, and um, you know, he's for whatever is best for the team, and uh, and me, me as well, whether that's coming in, going, um, so. What do you think has been the issue in those red zone? I mean, it's three games in a row where you all have got to inside the five and not score. What's that happening? Uh, tough to say right now. Um, I'd say we just have to watch film after this and uh, 
just really evaluate ourselves and see what what we think we can fix. So. Gavin, what's the frustration level at this point, um, just in the locker room? Um, it's pretty high, I would say, for everybody. Uh, you know, as competitors, you know, you hate to lose, but uh, you know, it's it's part of the game. Um, you know, all we know is, you know, how do we get better? Um, so, you know, watch the film, uh, come back Monday, and um, you know, really discuss what we can get better at. Uh, you know, see what we did wrong and be ready for next week. Kind of from the outside, it feels like this is kind of spiraling out of control. Does it feel like that in the locker room, and how do you maybe prevent that? Uh, I wouldn't say it, it feels like it's spir spiraling out of control. Um, I think it's just um, just tough situation. You know, uh, you know, don't get a you know another loss, but. Um, like I said, uh, it's part of part of the game. Um, you know, you know, get back to work, get better, um, and try to get a dub next Saturday. Yeah. Kevin, how do you evaluate how you played today? Uh, I would say definitely some some things I can uh, do better. Um, you know, operating and whatnot, but uh, you know, just have to really go in the film again and uh, and really see. Uh, but yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Just what's the mood in the locker room after another tough one? Uh, man, you know you're always down after a loss, man. We're ready to get back Monday and get back to work. Check your defense out. How frustrating is it to see another player run for almost 300 yards? Yo, man, very frustrating, but that's on us, man. We got to do a better job. We got to execute the game plan. Last week it was kind of the big passes. This week it was the big runs. How do you all kind of communicate those differences and try to figure out the kind of happy medium to stop both? And we just got to do our job and execute, man. I feel like if everybody do their job, everybody do what Coach asked us to do, it'd be in a pretty good position. But we try to do your own things and, you know, kind of things happen like that. You got that interception on defense, you know. Kentucky could have scored a touchdown maybe at that next possession, you know, things might have been different. How big of a play was that and, and how big of it was that, that you guys didn't get any points after it? Yeah, it's unfortunate we didn't get no points out of it, but I mean, I'm happy I was able to make the play. My coach made a great play call, put me in position, man, make a play and I was able to take advantage of it. Jake, you said that him running for 200, 278 was you guys not executing the game plan. So what was it that they were doing or that you weren't doing that led to that much success for their run? Tackle, uh, eliminate explosives. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of missed tackles. We had, you're supposed to be in the A gap, you should be in the A gap, you shouldn't be in the B gap. And if you go to the B gap, then the A gap is going to be wide open. So things like that. Just trusting your teammate, man. Did you, Gavin, just said it doesn't feel like it's spiraling out of control, even though it might look that way outside. How do you all make sure in the locker room this doesn't get out of control? Man, look yourself in the mirror. Look yourself in the mirror. Find out what you can do better because everybody can do something better. Don't just try to point fingers at the next guy. You know what I'm saying? Just, Staying, staying whole, man. Like it is rowdy. It is, you know, not going our way. But we all just continue to go to work and believe in each other. I believe positive things will come. Why do you think some of these defensive slip ups are happening during these games so late in the season? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's a good question. JJ's been such a leader for you guys on the defense. To see him go down kind of impact you in that second half. Absolutely, man. It's super unfortunate. Not to say that you would rather another guy go down, but you definitely don't want to see JJ go down with things he do for this team, man. He's such a great leader. He's always there for his man. So I hate that for him. I made sure I was able to go up there and share my love with him. Let him know I'm here for him, praying for him. What does it say about him to not go down and cause that timeout to give him a chance to get mm -hmm. that kickoff at the end of the half? Just show how much of a team guy he is, man. He made lots of sacrifices for this team. That's just one of them. Happy you guys were able to see that.